Just in case you missed it from now until Tuesday morning, you can get 30% off your entire order over on gfield.com by using code immortal at checkout. Whether you're looking to snag a new tub, shaker cup, or anything else from the site, now is the best time to act on it thanks to those increased savings. And now on to the regular video. The overall weapon arsenal here in Modern Warfare is pretty solid all things considered. We've got a pretty significant amount of weapons to choose from in all weapon categories, and when you choose any given gun, your loadout becomes even more diverse once you really level up that weapon and start unlocking the various attachments for it, as the gunsmith has a seemingly endless amount of setup combinations. So with that, you can take certain weapons that might not be everyone's first pick if they had a choice and turn them into something surprisingly effective. And today we're doing just that, as we break down three class setups that may be a bit underrated in all reality, but their effectiveness in game is really up there with the best of the best. But before we jump into the classes today, if you are new to the channel, hey hi, how you doing? We've got all the latest Call of Duty news and intel going up each and every day. So if you do want to stay on top of that, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. And of course, if you enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like rating on it as it would be much appreciated. And now let's get into three classes that are surprisingly effective here in Modern Warfare. Now, I do want to say in the interest of time, the perks and equipment on each class remain roughly the same with a few exceptions that I'll be sure to mention, so we'll only break down those parts of each setup for the first class that we dive into. That way we're not just rehashing the same thing again and again and again, so just uh, keep that in mind. Anyways, the first setup that we have here today is built around the MP5, which recently just got a slight buff alongside all the other SMGs, with an increase to the move speed and the ADS speed, and a reduction in the sprint out time, meaning the MP5 is now one of the best run and gun weapons to use in the entire game. Now people might overlook the MP5 because it is an SMG, and as I'm sure you guys know, the maps in this game are a bit larger and more AR, sniper, and LMG friendly than most other Call of Duties. So initially, many people might flock to the M4 or the Kilo or even the PKM over something like the MP5, but that is honestly where those people are missing out, because this gun is honestly a beast with the right setup on it. Now my go-to setup here consists of five attachments, the first of which is the Subsonic Integral Suppressor, as this thing really helps boost the weapon's potential by quite a bit. This suppressor offers an increase in aim down sight speed, while also adding sound suppression, and on top of that, this attachment also offers no visible tracers when shooting, and there are no enemy skulls that appear when you take out an enemy with this attachment equipped. Meaning, not only do you keep the element of surprise thanks to all of that, but you also get a nice increase to the ADS speed as well. Unfortunately, this suppressor does decrease the bullet velocity, but if you are using the MP5 primarily in close quarters engagements, that's really not going to be a huge hindrance. But four pros for one con is definitely a very nice trade if you ask me. I've then got the 5 milliwatt laser on my setup as well, and this is going to increase the hipfire accuracy and the sprint to fire speed in exchange for the enemies actually being able to see the laser sight in game. But if you play it right and focus on not letting that sight cross many open doorways or corners and edges, it's not going to be a huge con to actually have. And with that increased sprint to fire speed, you're going to be able to get your sights up much faster all around, which is a very big benefit. Next, I use the FFS Close Quarters stock on my MP5 as well, and this increases the aim down sight speed in exchange for a slight decrease in aiming stability. So once again, our mobility increases, which is going to be great for rushing around. I also have the 10mm rounds on there, which is going to increase the damage and the range in exchange for a decrease in the fire rate and the aiming recoil control. But that extra damage is going to allow you to shred through the enemies, especially if you use them with say the stopping power rounds field upgrade. Then for the last attachment, I use the stippled grip tape, as it is also going to increase the aim down sight speed and the sprint to fire speed, which once again is a big help when rushing around. And that of course is where this gun really excels and performs the absolute best. So with all five of those attachments on there, you end up getting a nice increase to the accuracy, the damage, and the mobility, whereas you end up decreasing the range, the fire rate, and the control. However, with the predictive recoil pattern, you can counter that recoil pretty easily, and using this weapon where it's meant to shine in those close to medium range fights is going to make it so that the range and fire rate drop-offs aren't as impactful in general. And all around, it is a very solid setup. 
Now, coinciding with that, I do like to use a second primary as my secondary weapon. So here I am using Overkill, and what I find really complements the MP5 well is a weapon that has a bit more range. For instance, the Kilo is that offers the option to still pick up some nice kills at a decent range while still having the Phenom that is the MP5 for the CQC situations. You could also very well run a sniper rifle like what we'll see with a setup a bit later on into the video as that also offers some solid range too. As far as those attachment setups go, they're not nearly as important since you are using the weapon as a secondary, but if you are interested on the Kilo specifically, I am rocking the same setup for my Overpowered Classes video, which consists of the Syngard Arms 16.6 inch barrel, the LP945 mini reflex, the Operator foregrip, the 50 round mags, and also the stippled grip tape. Moving on into the perks, obviously I've got Overkill in perk 1 as mentioned. In perk 2, Ghost is my go-to so I can stay off the radar as much as possible. And in perk 3, I find myself choosing between Shrapnel for that extra lethal equipment, and also Battle Hardened as that reduces the strength of enemy flash, stun, and EMP effects. Typically, Shrapnel is my go-to, but Battle Hardened can be really useful if your enemies are constantly spamming tactical nades, so that can come in handy too. Now for my equipment, I go back and forth between the Frag and the Thermite quite a bit. The Frag is really great for all kinds of things like flag protection or for breaching a room, whereas the Thermite is my anti-vehicle equipment for when I'm playing Ground War. Then finally for the remainder of the setup, I like to rock the Stim as well so I can manually heal myself when needed. Now like I said, the perks and equipment remain the same on all of my setups. So from here on out, we're really just breaking down the primary weapons and briefly touching on the secondaries as well. So next up, the second setup we have today is based around the M13, which I definitely think is one of the more underrated assault rifles in the entire game. The first attachment we have here is going to be the Tempest Marksman Barrel, which is going to increase the damage range, the bullet velocity, and also the recoil control, in exchange for a decrease in ADS speed and overall movement speed, but this attachment really allows the M13 to have a much better range, as stock it can kind of be a hit marker machine in those long range engagements. I then like to use the LP945 mini reflex, as I'm just not too fond of the iron sights, but that attachment is a bit more preference based. Then I use the M13 skeleton stock, which is going to increase the aim walking movement speed, the overall movement speed, and also the ADS speed, while only decreasing the aiming stability, so that's a pretty nice trade too. Attachment number 4 here is going to be the 50 round mags, as the stock magazine is definitely not super efficient when trying to take out more than like 3 enemies at a time, as it runs out of ammo pretty quickly with the faster fire rate and lower damage output in comparison to some of the other ARs, so that extra ammo definitely comes in handy. Then lastly I've got the stippled grip tape on there as well for all the same reasons as before. So when it's all said and done, you can see that the accuracy, the range, and the mobility all increase while the control slightly decreases. And in general, this M13 setup is really effective in those close to medium range fights, and honestly it can even hold its own in a few long range engagements too, so I think it is worth a try. For the secondary on this setup, I prefer to use a sniper. The attachment setup there really is not too important as it's really a sniper at the end of the day. Chances are, unless it is the Dragonov, it'll be just as lethal as you need it to be. And since the M13 excels in close and medium range fights, the sniper offers some nice range to the entire class. Now moving on into our third and final setup for today, here we've got the AUG, which is a gun that, much like the previous two, might get overlooked here and there, but it can seriously pack a punch with the right setup. Here I'm rocking the 407mm extended barrel first and foremost, as it increases the damage range, the bullet velocity, and the recoil control, while only decreasing the aim down sight speed. I then have the 5mW laser on the AUG as well, for the same reason as the MP5. I've got the Forge Tac CQB comb stock, they, uh, they could have made that name a little simpler, and this stock offers an increase to the ADS speed to sort of counteract that barrel, but it does also end up decreasing the aiming stability. Next up I have the 5.56 NATO 30 round mags, as the 5.56 rounds seriously allow the AUG to be much more effective at longer distances, as these mags increase the damage and the range, while only decreasing the aiming recoil control. Then finally I use the stippled grip tape here as well, so with all five of those attachments on there, the accuracy, the damage, the range, and the mobility all increase, and the fire rate and control decrease, but only by a little. So all around, this setup really brings out the true power of the AUG. 
And with this setup, you can honestly run an AR like the Kilo or a Sniper as a secondary, as you'll have some good distance to balance alongside the AUG's close to medium range efficiency. Now, with all of that being said, those are three surprisingly effective class setups to try out here in Modern Warfare, and that is going to wrap things up for today. If you found the video helpful or if you just simply enjoyed it, let me know by dropping a like rating on it as it would be much appreciated. And of course, if you are new here and you want to stay up to date with everything going on in the world of Call of Duty, including all the latest news and intel, updates and leaks, and pretty much everything else in between, feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on, that way you'll always know when I post a new video. As I mentioned earlier, from now until the morning of the 19th, my G Fuel discount code IMMORTAL has been boosted to a 30% discount, so if you do want to snag anything from the G Fuel site, now is definitely the best time to do so. Once again, thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.